Hey everyone, hope you're doing well today. In this video, let's go ahead and do some practice problems together dealing with the properties of exponents and radicals. So let's just jump right into it. For this first one, let's take a look at this expression of 4 over uh, 64 raised to the 5 6 power. And let's take this whole thing and then raise that to the 1 half power. Now the top doesn't look too intimidating, so let's just take a look at the bottom first. And what I would do here is just take a look at this 64 raised to the 5, 6 power. So I'm just going to deal with that on the side or below right here. And let's say we have 64 raised to the 5, 6 power. Okay, now keep in mind that we can always rewrite this as the 6th root of 64. And that whole thing is going to be raised to the 5th power, right? So remember the denominator, that bottom number is really telling us that that's going to be what the root that we're taking. And then that numerator or that 5 up here, that 5 is telling us what we're raising the whole thing to the power of, right? So uh, specifically here, we're trying to find the 6th root of 64, then raise that to the 5th power. You can always break the fraction up into those two pieces. Now, if you want to take a look at the 64 and say like, okay, is it a perfect 6th root? You can go ahead and use uh, prime factorizations if you'd like. If you notice here, you can take 64, break it into 2 times 32. You can say 32 is 2 times 16. 16 is 2 times 8. 8 is going to be 2 times 4. And this 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. So if you want to think about 64 in a different way, you can really say that 64 is the same thing as 2 to the 6th power, right? So it turns out 64 is a perfect 6th, right? Or has a perfect 6th root to it. So if that's the case, then we can simplify the 6th root of 64 and say that's just going to equal 2. And we're going to raise 2 to the 5th power. But wait, that's pretty much just 32, right? So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 32. And so that's what 64 raised to the 5 sixth power is equal to. So let's go ahead and just rewrite this here. And we're going to have this uh, 4 over 32. And that whole thing is going to be raised to the 1 half power here. Now, at this point, there's a couple ways you can go about this problem, but please look inside and notice that this 4 and 32 can be simplified or simplified. We can divide them both by 4. If we do that, we're going to end up with a fraction 1 eighth, right? Because 4 and 32 can be both divisible by 4. So we're going to get 1 eighth raised to the 1 half power. Okay, so that's one way we can go about this. Another way we could go about it is just split it up into two different uh, expressions with a numerator and denominator raised to the one half power. And I can show you that too in a moment if that helps. Okay, so at this point, we can go ahead and separate it anyway and say, okay, this is going to be one to the one half power on top. And on bottom, we can say this is going to be eight to the one half power. Right, we can always separate it into, rad uh, into those two separate ones. And then what I was going to say next is raising something to the one-half power in radical form is just writing it saying the square root. So we have the square root of 1 on top and the square root of 8 on bottom. So on the top, the square root of 1 is just equal to 1. And on the bottom, the square root of 8, we have to do a little bit of work for that. The square root of 8, remember, uh, has a perfect square inside of it. 8 breaks down into 2 times 4, and 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. So there are two 2's in there that make a perfect square. So 4 times 2 is 8, but the square root of 4 is going to be 2. So we can say this is 2 root 2. Now, you're going to want to also remember that you can't really have a radical in the denominator. So you can rationalize this by multiplying by root 2 over root 2 uh, on top and bottom, which is really just the identity, multiplying it by 1. And if you do so, we're going to get root 2 on top. And on bottom, we're going to end up with... I think 4, right? Root 2 times root 2 is just 2, and then 2 times 2 is 4. And so this right here would be our most simplified expression here, okay? Now, if you wanted to think about it a different way, so some people prefer to maybe not simplify the 4 over 32 right away, and that's perfectly okay. What you can do is just split it up so we have 4 to the 1 half power on top. And then on the bottom, you can say that's going to be 32 to the 1 half power. So you can just give that 1 half to both the numerator and denominator right away. Now, in radical form, this would just be the square root of 4 on top. And on bottom, this would be the square root of 32. Now, the square root of 4, we know, is going to be 2 on top. So that's not too bad. Now, 32 on bottom, that maybe has a perfect square hidden inside. So I'm going to say 2 times 16. I already know 16 is a perfect square, but I'm just going to go ahead and write out the rest of the prime factorization here. 2 times 4, 
and then two times two. So every two twos pair up to make a perfect square. So hopefully we can see that four of the twos are gonna make 16. So 16 times two is 32, but the square root of 16 is four. So that's gonna be four root two. Okay, now what we can do is simplify, simplify this two over four. That's gonna be one half, right? And so simplifying that, we're gonna have one over two root two. But wait, if you take a look at that, that's actually what we had earlier. So I'm just showing you this works uh, also, right? Whatever your preference is, that is okay. All right, so finishing up the rest of this, we can go ahead and multiply the root two on top and bottom so we get rid of the radical. And we're gonna end up with one times root two, which is root two. And on bottom, root two times root two is just two, and two times two is four. So either way you do this, you end up with the same expression. And so just for good measure, while I wrote the answer here in radical form, meaning I have uh, the square root in there, if we wanted to rewrite this using exponential form, we can do that as well. So let's go back real quick and rewrite this in exponential form as well. So if you take a look at the numerator here of this uh, square root of 2, the square root of 2, remember, is 2 to the 1 half power. And we can also take this 4 and rewrite it using the same base. So 4 is the same thing as 2 to the second power. Right? So one of those properties of exponents that we've talked about in the past or that you may already know is that when we have the same base, like 2 is the base for both the top and the bottom, and we have a fraction, we can actually subtract their exponents, right? So 2 to the 1 half power over 2 to the second power is really 2 to the 1 half power minus 2. So what's 2 take away, or what's 1 half take away 2? That's going to be 2 to the negative one and a half powers or negative three over two power. So if you needed to write this using exponential form, this is how you could write it. Two to the negative three halves power is the same thing as what we got earlier of the square root of two over four. This one's just an exponential form instead. Alrighty, let's try another one. So in this example, let's try taking a look at this expression of 3m to the one fourth power. And let's go ahead and multiply that by m times n to the one-third power, and let's raise that whole thing to the three-halves power. Okay, so the thing outside the parentheses, that 3m to the one-fourth power, we're just going to leave this alone because we can't really do anything to it. Uh, keep in mind that inside the parentheses, we have two bases. We have m to the first power, and we have n to the one-third power, so there's technically two bases there. Now, I know this isn't technically distributing, but some people like thinking about it this way, so we can give this 3 halves power to both of these bases inside, right? That power of a power property means that we can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and take that 3m to the 1 fourth power and leave it alone in front. And then if we go ahead and take m to the first power, that's this one right here, and we raise that to the 3 halves power, that exponent on the outside, we just multiply those exponents together. And if we do that, 1 times 3 halves is just going to be 3 halves. We have m to the 3 halves power. And then secondly, we have n to the 1 third power. So what's 1 third times 3 over 2? Let me just go ahead and write that on the side here. If we had those exponents, we had 1 third. We're going to multiply that by 3 over 2. Then we can see that those 3s will cross cancel, and we get 1 and 1. So that just simplifies down to being 1 half, right? That's to the 1 half power. So uh, going ahead, we can go ahead and say that this is going to be n to the 1 half power. That's what it simplifies or simplifies down to. Okay. Now, going a little bit further, if we want to keep this in exponential form, I think that's what we're going to do here. Then notice that we have some like terms, right? So if we take a look, this says m to the 1 fourth power and m to the 3 halves power. Those have the same base, and one of those properties we know is that for multiplying powers that have the same base, we actually just add their exponents together, right? So if we, I'm going to go ahead and write that on the side. If we have m raised to the 1 fourth power, and we're multiplying that by m to the 3 halves power, technically that's going to be m to the 1 fourth power plus this 3 over 2, All right? Now we need common denominators here, so if we turn them both into, into quarters, that's 1 fourth plus, uh, that's the same thing as 6 fourths. So what's 1 fourth plus 6 fourths? That's going to be m to the 7 fourths. Right, so that's uh, combining those two. If we multiply it and write it a little shorter, then we can go ahead and take our expression here and say this is going to be 3m uh, to the 7 fourths power and then n 
to the one half power. So this right here would be this expression simplified, simplified a bit, and uh, we've written it in exponential form here. Okay, if we needed to write this in radical form, we could as well. This would be three, and I check out the denominator for the uh, seven fourths. That's going to be the fourth root of m, but that whole thing would be raised to the seventh power. And then n to the one half power, that's really just the square root of n. So if you wanted to write it using radicals, you could as well. I'm just going ahead and showing you both so you feel more comfortable switching back and forth between those forms a little bit. All right, let's get rid of this and this and this. Let's try a couple more here. So for this one, let's try looking at this expression of 2a to the 1 half power, and let's multiply that by 5 times a to the 1 half power. Let's also multiply that by b to the 1 fourth power, because why not? And let's whole raise that thing, let's raise that whole thing to the second power here. All right, so just like the last one, we can't really do anything with this 2a to the 1 half power, so let's just focus on what's inside. Uh, keep in mind that there are three different bases inside here. This 5 is 5 to the first power, that's one base, and then we have a to the 1 half power, and then we have b to the 1 fourth power. So keep in mind that we're going to have uh, three different bases inside there, and this 2 that's on the outside technically belongs to all of those bases, right? That's why they're in parentheses and they're grouped, because they all are going to get it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this uh, 2a to the 1 half power on the outside and just leave that alone. And then looking on the inside, if we have this uh, 5 to the first power, we're going to use the power of a power property. So you can multiply that 1 times 2, and that's going to be uh, 5 to the second power. That's going to be nice because we can just multiply that out in a little bit. And then moving on here, we have a to the 1 half power. So on the side... Again, if we're going to multiply these exponents, if we multiply a half times two, those twos here will cross cancel, so those are just going to end up being one. And that makes sense because two halves makes a whole. And so that's going to just be a to the first power. I'm going to write the one just for now. Hopefully it helps you uh, make sense of what's going on. And then finally, we have b to the one fourth power uh, raised to the second power. So again, we're going to multiply those exponents of one fourth times two. And that 4 and 2 will cross cancel. So we have a 2 and a 1, okay? And uh, that makes sense because 2 quarters is really just a half. So this last part is going to be b to the 1 half power. All right, now to combine a few things here. So this 2 uh, is just a normal constant or a number, and we have 5 squared, and that's going to be 25. So 2 times 25, we can go ahead and say that's going to be 50 for a coefficient, right? Now, moving past that, we want to take a look at this a to the 1 half power and multiply that by a to the first power. And I'm going to write that on the side here. So we have a to the 1 half power multiplied by a to the first power. And remember, the product of powers property states that if they have the same base, we can go ahead and just add their uh, exponents together. So this is really 1 half plus 1. 1 half plus 1 is just 1 and a half, or it's the same thing as 3 halves, right? So... We can go back over here and say this is 50 times a to the 3 halves power. And then we go ahead and take a look finally at this uh, last term. This last term here is just b to the 1 half power. And there was no nothing that it could combine with, so we're just going to write that as b to the 1 half power. So uh, maybe getting rid of those dots for multiplication at the end. Sometimes I just like it to help keep things separate. All right, 50a to the 3 halves power times b to the one-half power, and this right here would be the most simplified expression, just like that, okay? And just for good measure, if we wanted to try writing this in radical form, we could also do that as well. So this 50 is going to be here. Uh, the denominator of 2 means we're taking the square root of a. I'm not going to write the 2 because it's implied. This whole thing would be cubed. You can put the 3 inside the radical if you want. It doesn't matter. And then also we can say, oh, uh, the square root of uh, b is going to be that last part. Now, there's other ways to write this too. I'm just going by quickly and just practicing with uh, converting exponential form to radical form. Alrighty, let's go ahead and clear this out. And clear this out. And let's just try one more for this video. Let's try this expression here of uh, x to the one-third power. 
And let's go ahead and multiply that by x to the 1 9th power. Let's take that whole thing and raise it to the 6th power and then divide that by x to the 1 3rd power. All right, so for this expression, now while we do have something outside the uh, parentheses, we have that little six up here. I'm not actually gonna use that one first. I'm actually just gonna look inside the parentheses because inside, notice how these two uh, powers have the same base. So we can go ahead and just combine those first, right? So on the side here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We can add their uh, exponents together. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, if we have x to the one third multiplied by x to the one ninth, Remember, we can go ahead and add those exponents together. So this is going to be x to the 1 3rd plus 1 9th, right? And so what is 1 3rd plus 1 9th? Well, using common denominators, 1 3rd is the same thing as 3 9ths, right? And then 1 9th stays the same. So what's 3 9ths plus 1 9th? That's just equal to 4 9ths. So we know this whole thing is really equal to x to the 4 9ths power. So going back over here to the left, if we're going to go ahead and uh, combine those or simplify it a little bit, this is going to be x to the 4 ninths power. And we're going to raise that whole thing to the 6th power, and we're still going to eventually divide by this x to the 1 third power. Now, if you didn't combine it from the beginning and you just started by taking this 6 and, uh, you know, raising all of those powers inside or both those powers inside to the 6th power and multiplying, you could do that too in the combined second, uh, but it's your preference. At this point though, we're just gonna go ahead and take that six and give it to what's inside here this one time. Again, you can choose to do it in a different step. That's perfectly okay. Um, we have to go ahead and multiply those exponents together though, right? So we have to multiply uh, this four ninths right here by that six. So I'm gonna use green here. So I'm gonna take that four ninths and multiply it by six, which is really six over one. We can cross cancel the six and nine, divide them both by three. So that'd be three, that would be two. And if you multiply here, four times two is eight, and then three times one on bottom is gonna be three. So if we take this whole thing uh, to the left, we can say this is gonna be x to the eight thirds power. And then we're dividing by this x to the one third power. And what's another way we can write division? We'll try to remember that we can rewrite division as a fraction bar, so this is really x to the eight thirds power over or divided by x to the one-third power. So hopefully this helps uh, bring back some memories of what we can do. The quotient rule, or the quotient property states that if we have the same bases, which we do here, we can actually subtract their exponents, right? So I'm gonna use blue to kind of show this next step. So this is the same thing as saying we will have here x to the eight-thirds power minus uh, one-third. All right, and that's really because they have the same base. You can subtract their exponents. Thankfully for us, we already have common denominators, so uh, 8 thirds take away 1 third is just going to be 7 thirds, so we can write this as x to the 7 thirds power. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and write that right up here and say that the most simplified version of this in exponential form is going to be x to the 7 thirds power, just like that. Now, just for good measure, if you want to see this in radical form, the little three on bottom means we're taking the cube root of whatever x is, just like that, and we're going to raise this to the seventh power. Okay, that's one way you could write this. Again, you can write the seven inside the radical as well. So I know that's a little bit confusing sometimes, so I, we, I didn't write it for the other ones, but if you wanted to, you can write that seven on the inside as well. Um, it's just kind of a preference thing or what might be more useful in different cases. So hopefully these four different examples helped you uh, gain a little bit better understanding of the properties of exponents and radicals. And as always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.